I wasn't going to do one on this, but I just kept writing. I'm going to spoil like this whole game, but I think Liza P's story is actually surprisingly good. If you have any interest in playing, you should probably play it before you watch any video game reviews about it. Pinocchio Souls-like is a Souls-like based on Pinocchio. Developer Neowiz mimics modern FromSoft game design pretty faithfully, but tries to hone in on the action gameplay more than most Souls-likes. Exploration is generally limited. There's a more even split between time spent in levels versus time spent in boss rooms. Levels feel more like downtime between bosses rather than a prep period before a boss. I'm not calling Lies of P a character action game, but this is a very character action design philosophy. Even if they weren't going for a character action feel in particular, it's obvious they took inspiration from Devil May Cry specifically. Most Lies of P levels are linear hallways with occasional shortcuts to the Stargazer. The levels are designed well, but it feels like little thought is put into how the world fits together. The game is almost entirely linear. Both paths leading out of the hotel end up back at the hotel, making the entire world map into a big bow tie. The mix and match weapon system will probably be a lot of fun for some players, but I didn't get much out of it. I put together quite a few weapons in the early game, but by mid game I mostly stuck with the greatsword blade on various handles. I loved the booster glaive, whose charge attack is a giant dash powered by the motor in the handle. When I got the two dragon sword, it was the one I stuck with to the end. Solid damage, a quick and mobile move set, and the charge attack parry frames make me feel like a god when they connect. The various lesion arms add a nice wrinkle to builds, but I don't really like using consumables in action games, so they ran out of fuel quickly. I feel like classes aren't really necessary in a game where stats don't allow or disallow certain weapons. Pinocchio's stats only affect his loadout by way of damage scaling. It'd be nice to be able to reset your stats, a pre-existing feature, down to the absolute minimum and build up from zero. Also, I didn't use Fable Arts much, so it'd be nice to use your bars for something else. Maybe escaping from grapples like Devil Trigger? I didn't care much for Lies of P's two major gimmicks, the Legion Arms and the Mix and Match weapon system, but its core combat, Block, Swing, Dodge, is so good that it doesn't need a bunch of fancy bullshit to be fun. This is exactly what I want out of an action game. Any boss can be beaten by simple spatial awareness and timing, something Sekiro doesn't always achieve. Like a character action game, and unlike a Souls-like, I found myself using my entire moveset frequently. Lies of P is a solid challenge, but I have to cop to summoning frequently. If I found a boss more frustrating than fun, I summoned for it. The only fights I don't regret are against the Black Rabbits, especially when they will tell you outright to seek assistance. Don't worry, I'm not a fake gamer, I did go back and beat every boss without summons on New Game Plus. I just need to be humbled first before I can appreciate an action game. I think Lies of P actually looks really good. It's built on Unreal 4, so it's capable of actually running on my system at max graphics. The Bell Epoch... Bell Epoch? I don't speak French. The Bell Epoch aesthetic is very pretty, and although it's easy to say it looks just like Bloodborne, I think Neo has developed enough unique environments to set Lies of P apart. Krat takes elements from a variety of Western European countries, so even if I hate the English, I can still appreciate the French influences. If I had to complain about the graphics with an X, I'd say that all the coasts look kind of stupid on Pinocchio, since he's like 5'4". They seem like they exist somewhere between regular coats and actual long coats. I can't comment much on the music. Either I had a video playing in the background or I was too focused on fighting a boss to listen. I like the phonograph. Changing out the hotel theme was a relief after a while, especially since it sounds so much like the phobic wizard theme. Some of the records got me a little choked up, actually. It's also a nice reason to revisit every merchant in New Game Plus when they start selling records. I really like the dichotomy of enemy types. Puppets may be fast similes of humans, but carcasses, the nobodies to the puppets heartless, are far less human frequently being simply called monsters. Carcasses quickly evolve beyond a humanoid shape. Pretty soon you'll face carcass bosses that are far more horrible than any puppet. Lies of P is significantly less cryptic than FromSoft's soul likes. Shortcuts all look the same, so you always know what to look for. NPCs are hard to miss. Almost all of them are in plain view of the major progression path. Stargazes are marked with relevant info on the warp screen. Important items, side quests, NPCs with shit to say. I hold active animosity towards any Souls-like's genre-mandated girlfriend, especially the ones that make me sit through two loading screens just to level up. I love the light you do from Stargazers later on. Bitches are always telling me don't touch the three fingers, but I'm gonna touch the three fingers. The NPC I connected with the most was Eladoro the Dogman. He's the boss weapon merchant, which meant I was always happy to see him. Plus his arc has a nice bit of mystery and ties in with the theme of self-determination through deception. I like the game's adherence to the theme, it informs every facet of the design. Aesthetically, narratively, mechanically, but... There's very little ambiguity on the issue of the humanity of puppets. Puppets are humans, they're literally powered by human souls. The ability to lie is supposedly what makes Pinocchio a human, but other puppets develop sentience, sometimes before Pinocchio even meets them. I think it's strange that the narrative places a lot of weight on this one trait in particular in the grand scheme of humanity. 
Every piece of Pinocchio is billed as an aspect of the self. The weapon in his right hand is as much a part of Pinocchio as the weapon that is his left hand. The costume he wears is as important to his character as the grindstone he equips, as the truth or lies he tells. Gemini, Lies of Peace Cricket Guide, is literally attached at your hip, but instead of steel and artificial flesh, he hangs off a tool belt. Nobody refers to Pinocchio by a name, only as Son of Geppetto, or Geppetto's puppet if they're racist. Lies of P is the first time I've felt like an RPG has given this much weight to self-determination both narratively and mechanically. The questions being asked of Pinocchio are Pinocchio, whether that question is do you know a safe place to stay, or will you wear a jacket or a vest? I'm sure a trans person will make a very thoughtful essay about Lies of P as a trans allegory. Most Souls games kind of fall apart at the end, both in level and boss design, but Lies of P continues to introduce solid levels and great bosses through to the end. Unlike Elden Ring, the last few bosses in Lies of P are actually more fun to fight than the bosses found earlier. This makes replays extremely easy to get into. Frequently in Dark Souls 1, I will stop playing as soon as I beat Smornstein, occasionally moving past them into one or two of the new areas. I'm far more likely to simply start a new save file and play through in a new game plus. But in Lies of P, I can see myself just looping over and over due to this much shorter runtime compared to any Dark Souls game. Again, this is a very character action design philosophy, a shorter game you're meant to replay multiple times. You continue to upgrade Pinocchio into looped playthroughs, challenging yourself with harder and harder bosses. In a typical Souls-like, you'll have everything you could want on a first playthrough. Most Souls-likes will simply let you keep leveling up, but Liza P continues to unlock new tiers of P-Organ perks in New Game Plus, along with a couple new hairstyles. And unlike Dark Souls, Liza P will give you upgraded armor throughout loops, though, though they mostly end up being inventory clutter. I hope Neowiz is able to expand on the mechanics in future entries. Pardon my optimism, but I think Liza P has the potential to be a genuine sister series to FromSoft's future Souls games. Borrowing and lending mechanics, learning from each other's mistakes, like Neowiz's Bayonetta to FromSoft's Devil May Cry. The major difference being, of course, that unlike Bayonetta, Pinocchio's Souls-like was actually good from the first entry. Thanks for watching my fucking video. If you want to support me, you can buy yourself a six pack of local craft beer. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm queer. I get queer issues. Where's the gender select in this game about self-determination? About unconventional identity? About the value of the self and its flexibility? The trials and tribulations found during the process of self-realization are integral to both the lies of P experience and the queer experience, and this game doesn't even give you the option of womanhood. But Chief, the original Pinocchio's not a girl, Pinocchio's a real boy, and you'll never be a woman. All of those things are true, but Pinocchio is not a stone-cold killer either. Pinocchio didn't have a gun hand, and he sure as fuck didn't kill God with the lost sword of Yisun Shin.